Okay. What's happening is I'm here literally for two more days. Um, Bree and I are going to then drive to Oklahoma, see my family, see my daughter, see any classmates, anyone needs tattoos, let me know. While I'm there, I'm going to be in Yukon, uh, then we're talking about heading up to Stillwater a little bit. She needs to see Eskimo Joe's. Come on guys, Eskimo Joe's, you know where that's at. Alright, it's the place. If you're in Stillwater, you go to Eskimo Joe's. That's just what you do. Well, then we'll okay. do that. Well, we're doing that for sure. Sweet. All right. Might even score us a cool Eskimo Joe shirt because they're be very awesome. collectible. Oh. All right. So then from there, we are going to make the trek down to West Palm Beach, Florida. Okay. So when we drive, I mean, obviously, if we drove straight, it'd take us three days to drive all the way to Florida. Um, it's 2,700 miles. Um, yeah, we could do that, but no, we're not going to do that. We're going to go in maybe six hour stints, something like that, something that's doable, something that's not going to kill us, you know, something maybe wherever we stop, we can tattoo along the way. That'd be kind yeah, of fun a little fun. bit. But what we're going to do is we're going to take um, cameras with and we're going to film our journey and make it a documentary. Yeah. Okay. I am with the Breezinator, Breezy in the house. That's right. All right, so. Ooh, Reggie's car. You Fuck got it. Dude. You're a foot away from it. Good. You're good. See, look, See, all kinds look, of clearance there. Looks on my side. All kinds of clearance oh. there. Okay, so what we're doing now, I just showed you guys my huge pile of stuff that needs to get into the car when we get it. But what we're doing now is going to pick up my car right now, the one that we're going to drive. Um, we're going to try to get it all the way to Albuquerque tonight, but we'll see, right? Right. We shall see. We're going to make but it happen. But with Breezy driving, oh, for sure, we'll probably get there tonight with that. That's a fact. Because she drives fast. Yes. Williams, Arizona. Oh, what Williams, What a bustling yeah. place that is. Yeah, I like Williams, actually. I mean, it's not bad. I mean, well, I mean, I wouldn't want to live there, yeah, but I wouldn't want to live there yeah. either. <laughs> um, but, and the reason why we got to Williams is because it started... And you can see here it's kind of late in the afternoon, but we had the notion to turn on our headlights for some reason to begin with and saw that it was out. What's up everyone? Okay, um, we are currently in Flagstaff. Okay, um, we noticed our front headlight on the right went out. Um, so now we're just going to drive during the day to Oklahoma City. So now we got to find a BMW dealership or a pick and pool there. So we'll be in Oklahoma for about uh, three or four days, something like that, just to, you know, get it all lined up and all that kind of crap. Okay, so I'm all loaded up. I'm all loaded up. Here's my travel companion, Breezy. Say hey. Hi. Okay. I was just telling them about the headlight being out and we're heading to Oklahoma City to try to find a pick and pull or a BMW uh, dealership, something like that. Um, we're going to drive as far as we can today as the light permits. Uh, hopefully Gallup or maybe Tucumcari. Who knows? We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Um, we just got a bomb breakfast at Jack, Jack in the, the box, box or as they say, Yak in the Box. Jack in the Crap. Um, we had an amazing night last night. Um, we did. Yeah. It was interesting. We got in... We were looking for an O'Reilly's to find a new headlight bulb and found that the hotel that we stayed in about eight months ago when we went to that concert up here, that Sepultura Prong concert, was right next door. So we were like, oh crap, let's just go in there. Breezy worked her magic, got a cheap ass room, only 45 bucks. I mean, come on now. That was great. Um, so someone was watching out for us there for sure. And then when we get in there, we're kind of bored sitting around. It was about seven o'clock at night. Yeah, and this is great because Kevin hates ice smoke because I hate ice smoke too. So I went outside to have a cigarette. Yeah. Continue. Well, no, you tell the story. Okay, well, I went outside to have a cigarette and there is a woman out there and we started talking and we kind of got along well. So I asked her and her husband if they wanted to tattoo. It was a Navajo woman. A Navajo woman, her and her yeah, husband yeah. were Navajo. Yeah. And they, I told them to give us 30 minutes yeah. and they came over and got four tattoos. Yeah. Four tattoos.
four tattoos. Yeah. Four tattoos. Yeah. And we had a great night with them. And yeah, they were they hung out all night. We were hanging out, having a good time. They're telling us some crazy stories from from their past and the the res up here and all mm -hmm. kinds of stuff. Yeah, and yeah, it was really it, it really was very interesting yeah. evening. Interesting evening. And then she showed back up this morning yeah. and hung out for a little. Yeah, bit. hung out a little bit. And then uh, now we just ate. Now we're literally getting back on I forty and getting as far as we can freaking go as long as the light will permit. So that's what's up. We will um, post back in and check back in at our next major uh, stopping destination. All right, cool. Um, right now we are in Flagstaff the day after staying at the budget motel. Because of the headlight because problem. Because of the headlight issue, right? Yeah. Okay. But we did leave early that day. We did leave early that mm -hmm. day because we did some tats yep. and then we that went, night. And then we went to Jack in the Box and then got a nice breakfast and then we were off. From Flagstaff, we ended up driving all the way to Winslow, and we thought it'd be a great idea to pop in there and see if we could find those statues that we keep hearing about. Oh, oh yeah. supposedly the Eagles guy has a statue in Winslow, Arizona now. Because you're standing on, is it on the corner, on the corner of, of Winslow, Winslow, Arizona? Arizona. That's when Baby Blue said that to me. Yeah. So basically, down now there's these are plaques that they have um, talking about those statues. Oh, okay, I um, didn't pay attention to that, but that figures. <laughs> right. That's typical. And then that thing on the ground was all the people involved with the donations for it. Oh yeah, I think I was just in all over the statues and <laughs> right. Just, yeah. And I thought these were pretty cool. They're they're cool. I mean, they're, I give them credit that. That's pretty cool. But there was nothing in that whole damn town. Nope. I even tried to find Johnny there, and Johnny was no longer there. Yeah, we even walked around. We were asking directions. I even got in touch with her on Facebook, but she, yeah. no, she doesn't check it often. I yeah. get it. But, yeah. And I, I think this looks like my good friend Terry. Terry with that. But, but he's more hairy. Yeah. That guy's more hairy. <laughs> there you go. He's very Terry-like. Yes, he is very Terry-like. Yes. Oh, there's the corner. Yep. Standing on the corner. Yeah. In Winslow, Arizona. <laughs> there you go. Winslow, freaking Arizona, the most depressing place in the United States. But we did take a picture in front of Glenn Fry and a couple other musicians. Now we're heading to Gallup, New Mexico. But look at this boring, boring scenery. As far as I can see, nothing to look at. Someone shoot me in the head right now. Let's hope Gallup Gallop is better. Holbrook's also nothing to really smile about. I don't even remember if um, we probably got gas there maybe. Yeah, yeah, we just rode, rode through looking for a, a gas station, whatever, just, you know, quick little, you know, whatever. And that's Holbrook. Honestly, um, if, you, if, if you said Holbrook, Arizona, I would still go, what direction is that? Because I have really no <laughs> right, idea at right, this point. Right, right, right. It's just uh, in between Winslow and Gallup, and it's a sleepy little town with a bunch of Native Americans. And I probably and, loved and, it and that time, right? And that's all it was. Did I like it? Yeah, I mean, there was nothing oh, really good. to like or right. dislike. Okay, just, cool. Okay, but now Gallup, which was a little nicer. Which I thought I hated. I right. really did. Right. Yep. Yeah. But I have I like I like New Mexico. It's not bad. I wouldn't want to live there, yeah. but compared to some of the other states you'll see this one you know, it's you know 50-50. Yeah. You know, if I had to be somewhere, I Yeah. The energy to me and especially to you cuz you're an energy feeler person. Yeah. Um felt kind of heavy though. For me too. Yeah, that's why I've never yeah. cared for New Mexico. Yeah. And I'd say almost all of New Mexico felt that way to me, at least in the areas where we went. I thought Holbrook was in Texas. No, Holbrook. Oh, see. No. No. I don't know why I just thought okay. of that. Okay. Now we're coming into Albuquerque. Okay, okay. Albuquerque. Albuquerque. You like Albuquerque because Albuquer you always said about the lights. The yeah. lights, Albuquerque lights, the lights, lights, lights. Yes. The Albuquerque lights at night are kind of cool when you're coming through. Plus, I like the mountains in the background. Yeah. And, but it also felt kind of heavy in Albuquerque. Yeah, it's heavy there too, yeah. Um, a lot of Native American action there too. Yeah, but it's just a different kind of energy with the Native Americans there. It right. wasn't good or bad, it was just right. different. Look at this crazy bathroom. Kind of an interesting shower. It is an interesting shower. All right? It's very, very interesting. Okay, this is our room in Albuquerque. Icky Albuquerque. It's very odd energy here. 
and we'll talk about it more in the end but this is very kind of a small room just a you know front of the mill simple bed here um, we thought the floors were kind of cool though this weird we actually have non carpet here. floors we, have, uh, wood floors. we enjoyed that breezy's was bright and early up this morning. Yes, I was. Six in the morning, rare and to go. And well, no, what's more rare, Kevin, is actually you're up. Oh, I know. Well, someone named Breezy got me up. Because I rock. So we can depart quicker. Yes. Okay. So then, going outside, Albuquerque. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. All right. So that was the first day. We ended up getting up early that day and then ended up um, driving out in some super dense fog mm -hmm. to what she was talking about. And it was stressful because we didn't have a headlight and it was, the fog was so freaking thick that we couldn't even see. Yeah, you think we'd have a clue by then, but right. no. So, but we got through it. Well, we... Bad. Now, they were this, neat. They were different. now, this place coming up, you haven't lived until you've been to Santa Rosa. Oh my gosh. I don't I even... mean, look at this. Look at this, ladies and gentlemen. Um, absolutely nothing. Jackrabbits and rattlesnakes. That's what's in And I didn't Santa even Rosa. get to see one. So here's the deal. We uh, needed some gas. So we went to the Loves coming up. Um, we tried to frequent a Loves as often as possible when we yeah. were looking for, right? Because yeah. they had the biggest, most flashy signs. Now coming from Santa Rosa towards um, Amarillo, this is what we saw. Yeah, this a is... A whole lot of crap. Yeah. I mean, look well, at this. it's not crap. It's just fog, which is really cool if you have two headlights. Yeah, true, true. But I'm sure someone loves living in this area. Well, they would probably love living in it. It's just not it, us. It's not us. Oh, yeah. here's a bridge. Yeah. Now, Amarillo oh, the, yeah. had kind of deep, heavy, yeah, also and they, energy. Then, in Amarillo, they do have Amarillos dead on the side of the road. I can say that. <laughs> right. And one thing, guys, that Breezy did the entire trip was see every freaking dead animal well, from Florida all the way back. She's like, oh, there's there's a deer, but it looks like a kangaroo. <laughs> Okay, there's another armadillo. Oh, there's another deer. Oh, there's another one. Yes. Well, okay. it just made me... All right. We're in the middle of nowhere. Well, actually, no, we're in Groom, Texas. Just went through Amarillo. But check what you're about ready to see. Yes, folks, that's a massive cross. All right, let's roll over this way so we can see it better. Check out some of these interesting things here. And yes, these windmills are everywhere in this area, thousands of them, all directions as far as you can see. All right, let's look at this thing. Boom, whoop, there it is. Huge cross. It's supposed to be 85 feet tall. Interesting, huh? It's like Jesus standing in front of, I don't know who that would be. Huh. Mother and Coming up on the Last Supper and the Crucifixion, it looks like. This is a weird place. I'm in the middle of freaking nowhere, people. Let's check out the detail on these guys. Fly up this way. Fly up the hill here. Flying up the hill. Fiction action. I 
right off I-40 here. See all the trucks going by, all this freaking huge windmills everywhere. Very interesting. There's Breezy way off in the distance there. Back view of the massive cross. Now oh, that's a big ass cross. Here's the uh, Roman soldier pounding the nails into the arm. It's kind of a cool stack. I don't know what that's supposed to be. Looks like some Indian, but it's got to be some Roman weirdness with Jesus. Image of him carrying the cross. Yes, here she is giving him the something. Oh, and here's someone helping. Someone did attempt to help him with the cross at some point in the story. Okay. And we got Well, and here's the ride, man. She's uh, been holding up great. Headlights still out, so we've been driving only in the day, but we're about ready to fix that over the next couple days when we get to Oklahoma City. All right, but here's the ride. You can see she is packed up. Just bam, just packed. But Gonna fix that horrible paint issue when we get to Florida. All right, but other than that, she's looking pretty good. Packed to the hilt. Ready for the rest of the trip. Now to Oklahoma City to oh, meet yeah, up exciting. with my bro, my oldest brother, Jim. Yeah, I didn't know what to expect in this situation. Yeah, no idea what to nope, expect. Nope, I was just gonna walk in. into it with him. Breezy at but our finest. What do you think about Oklahoma City in general? I loved it. It kind of had nice energy. Yeah, I loved it. And it, it. kind of had nice highways. Very well painted, yeah, easy absolutely. to negotiate. I, yeah, I agree. Right? And those big build, yeah, big buildings. Liked it. Big buildings are cool. Yeah, like the flower see, things, the flower and, buildings. Right, and you will see that's coming up. Uh, oh, look at that thing over the highway. Yeah. That was really cool. At night, that thing lights up. Oh, yeah, it was green and red and yeah. very Christmas like. Yeah. Okay. We are at O'Reilly's. We went in. With a no-go on the headlights. So now it's going to be operation go to a junkyard or something like this. Uh, we are in Yukon, Oklahoma. Look at these large buildings. Something you never see where we're from. It's a grain elevator. Grain elevator. And across the street is another grain elevator that used to And there's to have another big one. That used to be the um, flour mill where they actually made flour. Oh, really? On the end down there with all those windows. Oh. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Okay. So now we are headed. Yeah, Caleb wants to buy that old flour mill and make it into apartments. <laughs> yeah, hey. <laughs> Look at that thing. Capture it a little bit right here. All right, even in Oklahoma, we got some crazy trails going on here. I thought, I thought Trump put a stop to those, but they've started again. Very interesting. Very interesting. Okay. Breezy in the back seat. What's up, yo? Hey. All right. Big brother Jim holding things down. Hey. All right. Here we're in work. State. What did you think about that? Nice I building. thought it was a beautiful college. It is very beautiful college. Yeah, it was a beautiful college. And you like the feeling of it. And yeah, the it was people great. were cool. Yeah, and it was totally. cool seeing all the kids walking around. Yeah, it was so and, cool. Right? Yeah. And you got to kind of see a little history of where I went. Yeah, from it was cool. Yeah, it was really cool. Yeah. And then now she she really likes the Pistol Pete logo. Yeah, I do. And she got her a cool OSU hat. I do. So this is 
this was the first day when we actually made it out to Lake Carl Blackwell and the spot where he puts his oh, um, yeah. trailer. The trailer is not there it's right not now. There. Take note of that. The trailer is where that big hole right there is supposed Should, to go. Yeah. yeah. Lake Carl Blackwell. Empty spot, so. <laughs> Breezy. So we're here. Hi. We're I don't know how to show my phone. See if you want to do something <laughs> before 3.30 or... All right, we are at Lake Carl Blackwell in college. Oh, she's already on? I was every day water skiing here with the Oklahoma State water okay. ski team on this lake right here. We're going to walk down here and check it out. Where are we? We're at Carl Lake Carl Lake, Blackwell. Lake Carl Blackwell. Yes. Oklahoma. Yes. It's still so water. I love it. Home of Kevin. I, home of Kevin. I love it. Isn't this great? Yes. Isn't it beautiful? Just showing in this awesome breakfast place. Yes, it's awesome. We're in Yukon still. Yesterday we were in Stillwater. You're gonna see all that for sure. So it's happening, folks. It's happening. All right, Jim. Where are we? We're in El Reno, Oklahoma. El Reno, Oklahoma. We're on the old and Rock Island Road here. And it continues with the large buildings that hold wheat and grain, Grano, baby. the grains to make wheat. They have. The and elevators then, inside there that, that rotate the Wow, and then, so... It's pretty interesting. So, and look how dismal it is, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Oklahoma in the winter. Boom, boom, boom. Yes, oh, yes, yes. The Salvation Army. Yes, yes, yes. We're about ready to go downtown. Then yeah. to the Oklahoma City site where the bombing happened. No, we're, we're going downtown now. Oh, wow. All right, we are in downtown El Reno, the old classic Route 66 route. So there's a lot of history here. Look at these old buildings. My landscape's fogging up because it's foggy and misty here today.
This, th th I think this was here. The first floor, second floor, third floor. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah so this whole row was on the first floor. I see a lot of kids. Each of these chairs represents someone who died in the Oklahoma City bombing. Of course, the big chairs were adults. Smaller chairs were kids. A lot of kids died. You can see it goes all the way down. This is called Reflection Lake the building once stood. So from Stillwater, um, from Yukon, the bombing thing, we went to Stillwater again just for a short stint. And from Stillwater, we ended up going to Dallas, Texas. And as you can see, we hit rush hour. Um, but I was able to capture these cool downtown buildings. Um, it, we got through it. It wasn't so crazy. We ended up um, having an issue trying to find the I-20. We didn't know the I-30. You had to take the I-30 to hit the I-20. Now we do. Okay, so now we're heading from Dallas, Texas. I'm glad to, you remember. We're heading to Shreveport. Well, things got weird. I don't know if it's because the sun went down, but things well, got weird. Well, it's not only that. It well, was just the end. No, maybe it was I started seeing dead chickens or yeah, it was weird. something weird. It wasn't even that the color of them. It was just it just that, felt weird though. It was just a different vibe. Right. And then from there, the next morning, we're heading down towards Baton Rouge, and there's that thing down towards Baton Rouge, and there's that cool, really long. That was the cool, bridge. the coolest, and the only cool thing about Louisiana, Louisiana, right? Was that bridge? That thing was long, and I it was I was so mad at that point. Look at I just <laughs> did the peace sign, Kevin, I know. and flipped you off because I wanted to stop and pet a damn alligator, but. Things got goofy in Louisiana oh, for whatever it was, reason. It was like, let's just get through this because it was weird energy Yeah, there. but I didn't want to rush this trip, and that was not our intention. But by this point, we were in a rush for yeah. I don't know why. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We were thinking about going to, at this point, we were thinking about going to um, um, New Orleans, but we said, decided yeah. to take the quicker route. Yeah, we were going to go to New Orleans, but something goofy must have happened that right. night before, and I might remember if we can hear what's going on. Right. Um, but something happened that made it trigger it, and it would probably well, be important to find well, out. Well, your friend texted you and said there's a shortcut route if you go this route instead of going all the way down, because it saves like two hours out of the trip if you don't go to New Orleans, if you just take the other, other route. Well, there's a reason why we were in a hurry. Um, basically, this was just very pretty. I remember that cool bridge, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Cool bridge. Um, then we're heading towards, that was, um, that was Baton Rouge area. Now, Gulfport was right on the water, I remember, but I remember seeing tons of trees. I'm still stuck on why we were in a rush. Um. I'd like to find out. Who knows? Um, Mobile, Alabama. You liked Alabama. I loved Alabama, especially on my way back yeah. to Prescott, Arizona. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. But Mobile felt not heavy. No, it didn't. Alabama. Feel, yeah, I know. I never had an issue with Alabama. And let me look at it and see. Yeah. Let me just check it out to make sure I didn't have an issue. I right. can't hear what's going on. but. Well, and I thought the buildings were nice there. I thought the, the architecture was kind of pretty. I mean, it's different. Those weird two buildings there on the left is kind of interesting. And this one's kind of Empire State Building looking a little bit. A little bit. Don't you think? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was probably, then, oh, this tunnel was crazy. The cool tunnel. We started filming about halfway down the tunnel. Yeah. yeah right? Yeah. And it was long. It was, it took us, what, at least a good two minutes to get through it? She's from this point on or from the beginning no, from on? from the beginning. Jeepers, I can't count. I just can't hold my breath that long, Kevin. 
It was yeah, long, no, though. You would have had to hold your breath a long time. Yeah, I, I don't out. know how long that was, but it's foggy and shit weather. Oh, yeah. tried to stop in Pensacola because it was getting dark. And then we went to a couple different motels and they were just super expensive. me out they move too fast you're, and they freak me out you're screaming like a little girl i was screaming like a little arms, girl right? and i think i was on the bed even texting turtle <laughs> and robin about these cockroaches and maybe tanya was even earlier than that it was like 5 30 there was I hear this crazy commotion out front, like skidding, and then bam, 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 bam. And I look out the window, and there's a car laying upside down. Mm -hmm. That just happened right in front of my eyes, and the tire flew up on the grass in the hotel that we were staying at. Hi, Breezy. Hi, Kevin. All right, where are we? We are in... Um, almost Tallahassee. Almost Tallahassee, Florida. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And we stopped at this Burger King gas station side of the highway. We're six hours away from Palm Beach, Florida, where we're going to hook up with the Roger Dodger and come up with the next phase plan and getting ready to see what we're going to be doing for the next few days. I'm excited. It's going to be fun. Okay, are you ready? I'm ready. I'm ready. Here is Orlando, okay? Um, we had to drive through a couple different areas of Orlando. We got a little backwards in Orlando. Um, that's all right. Happened. But Orlando was pretty. But at this point, we're like, let's just get where we're going. Yeah. Um, and figure it out. Um, this is where Universal Studios is. This is where Disney World is. Right down this road. Um, so if you guys are ever traveling there, that will look familiar. All right, we're in West Palm Beach, Florida. We're at a Motel 6. Whoop, 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 whoop. Nothing really going on. The car's holding up. Okay. Road Warrior. This is what's going on. Uh, we drove all the way here. And the guy I was supposed to be with that's lining all this up uh, doesn't even have a place for himself yet for about another two weeks. Um, something like that, maybe a month. He said December 1st, so. Um, then I could easily, you know, get with him and that kind of crap. So then uh, my buddy, uh, Pablo and um, a tattoo artist friend of mine in um, Fort Lauderdale just 
hit me up yesterday to give him a call. So I called him up and uh, he's been in New York. So I just don't know if he's back yet. Um, only if I, um, basically at this point, because the timing's off, only if he's willing to take me under his wing and give me a place to stay and get me established down there would I be able to stay here right now. So we are entertaining the idea of, yes, I know, driving back to Oklahoma, um, where I can then over the next month or so just live for basically cheap and save, 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 wait for things to line up when things are better lined up, then get my ass out here and make this movie. But even in Oklahoma, I can start with the preliminaries and um, getting it going and also uh, starting to write the next big movie that's been heavy on my brain. Uh, because if, if I go back to Oklahoma, it's going to be heavy snow for a few months and I'd be trapped in a trailer with nothing to do. So right, 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 right. And kind of leaning, kind of leaning towards that. So we'll see. Um, today, today is a big day. We, we're low on funds. We went down to, you see Breezy back there in the background walking around. Um, it's been super stressful. Um, lots, uh, we've wanted to kill each other at times. We've wanted to laugh with each other at times. It's been a true adventure driving all the way here. But what might happen at this point is we might go over onto the other side of Florida and visit her family a little bit on our, in our route back maybe to Oklahoma. If things don't develop today uh, with Pablo, so you can see it's a really uh, make it or break it situation today. Um, we're down to $25 and um, I might have to pawn the guitar. I don't know. We're waiting on some money to flow in a little bit. Uh, if we can scare up a tattoo, that'd be great. Uh, originally, her flight was scheduled to leave on the 18th from Fort Lauderdale. But if, cha if things change, we'll drive our ass back to uh, Oklahoma and then she'll fly out of there. Or something like that. So. I'll keep you posted. This is what's up. Scary situation for me a little bit, but we're making it happen. We're doing it. All right. Get some pelicans. Uh, before we make that long ass drive back up to Oklahoma, where found this little area of boat ramp. It's not the beach, but it's the ocean. Breezy, first time ever seeing a pelican. This is kind of funny. It's going to take off flying. It's like, screw you, I'm going over that other dock. Yeah. They're like, leave us alone. taken off. Okay, we are in Boynton Beach, Florida right now. And we finally found a little bit of a beach access. After about an hour of running around and getting very frustrated trying to find a beach access. Our phone kept tank. Her phone kept trying to take us to basically apartments instead of this. So she's changing right now. But I'm going to film her going into the ocean. And we'll see if it's too cold or not for her. All right, cool. Go for it. Go walk and see if any more will run out. From the green, from the moss. It's a crab! Oh. It's a crab! Oh my god, they walk sideways! I know they do. Here, let's get some more over here. Looking for crabs. Don't make one run towards me, I'll freak out. You did freak out. That was not yeah, out. just keep walking that way. One more. 
Breezy is freaked out completely by the crabs. She's making discoveries. Part of seaweed. Breezy going into the ocean. Going to Beach, Florida. She's attempting to go deeper. Deeper into the ocean. <laughs> yeah, it's seaweed. Don't worry about it. It's seaweed. Go for it. There you go. Go on out. Further. <laughs> She's stuck in the shallows. Swim out there, babe. Swim. What? Swim. There you go. <laughs> Don't be tripping. <laughs> there it comes. <laughs> She's attempting to go deeper. It's like, get on out there, girl. Swim. Swim. Get out there in them breakers. Ha, 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 ha.
<laughs> but remember how heavy it rained for like two straight hours um, when we left the well, beach going yes, up? Yes, I just found it very interesting because the whole time, Kevin, all I heard was it only rains for 15 minutes in Florida. Mm -hmm. but Period. You've, but you've heard that from a few people. Well, no. Kev, you're the only one I heard that from. And the whole time I was in Florida, guess what? It rained. Yep. Yeah, but it is winter. You can make excuses for Florida all you want, <laughs> Kevin. But I've seen it with my own two eyes, and I witnessed it. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> but for the record, ladies and gentlemen, it does rain only 15 minutes in southern Florida in the summer. We went in the winter. Go okay. Florida. Here we go. I Remember? was shaking out my shorts, yes, Kevin. <laughs> and then what happened after that was even worse. Because you decided to take off my shirt because I had sand everywhere, apparently, you, after this little excursion here. Yes, you had sand everywhere. Including in my boobs. You, you had it At this point, you basically uh, were not appreciating uh, the Haitians. The black Haitians in Florida. And I don't even know. I still don't know what a Haitian is because my first instinct when I hear a Haitian is right. the first part of it is hate. <laughs> so. But they're from Haiti, which is part of the, almost by the Caribbean, a little further south. And that's great. they speak French Creole. We're recording. Okay. okay, ladies and gentlemen, we wound up in Jacksonville, Florida for the night. I don't like Jacksonville, by the way. <laughs> she does not appreciate Jacksonville. Um, but we're coming into. Wait, with water in them, why? It's dripping from this. Oh, okay. Okay, baby Jesus, please. Okay. Don't fail me now. We're going into the cheapest motel in all of Jacksonville. Um, I swear. Okay. Kev, okay, here we go. If I see one roach, I know. you're gonna go get something to spray. <laughs> okay, what? I just I'm already freaking out because huh. I just seen a shadow and I just don't want to bug the problem <laughs> you've anymore. Seen a, you've seen a shadow. Okay. Well, this is a nice little shower though. They don't have a tub, okay. but it's a shower. Where's the lights okay. in this thing? So far there, I don't see a roach. Okay. Okay, we're, we're, we're on roach patrol here. We're looking. Let's go in the bathroom. We'll see. Kevin, don't tell me I'll see because I don't want to see a roach. I don't. Do we see any roaches? Uh, there's none. Okay. Thank you, baby okay. Jesus. I told you he was okay. real. Okay. <laughs> uh, it, it seems to be a roach-free environment. <laughs> okay. All right. No screaming tonight. Okay. Okay. What do you want me to say about this dog? Um. Basically. The story with this brown dog, it was a male, right? It was a male. It was a male, I, I believe. believe. It, was a male. it was probably about a mid size, uh, maybe about 40 pounds, maybe 50. Probably more 50, 60. Some, pounds. Somewhere he in was, there. He's a good, big, a good he was, sized dog, good, but skinny. Yeah, he was skinny. You can see hearing um, some commotion, and we're, what's that? So we go out into our landing. We're up on the second level, and we look over, and we see this brown dog. Um, being shooed out of the f uh, the front entrance of the red uh, red roof inn. Yeah. Okay, Breezy, where are we? We are in Georgia. And how are you liking Georgia? I love Georgia. Right? Yes. Tell me about the experience we just had. Well, we went into a Waffle House and there was a bunch of ladies in there Good old southern yes. ladies with real thick accents. Yes. All right, so we're on the highway uh, 75 north, heading towards Atlanta right now, and our return back to Oklahoma City. Um, this is what the terrain looks like. It's a little bit different than what we've been seeing, but the people here so thus far have been very nice. They say hey, they say hi, they greet you, they joke with you, they, you know. Everyone says hi, like they should. Yes, they, they speak back when spoken to. Yes. Yeah, okay. Because right. it right. was pretty sketchy. So basically, you are bound and determined to pet 
an alligator. Well, yes, that this was my whole trip. purpose even before this trip. My whole thing was to pet an alligator because I was convinced I was going to be able to pet an alligator. Right, so we settled for a stuffed alligator head. Yes. What's going on here is that Kevin had an automatic hit to his account for your yeah, car insurance. Car insurance. So we had to pull over on the side of the road in Georgia, Georgia to look for his social security number right. to give to his brother Jim, Uncle Jim. Loved Alabama. Yeah, it was it was very nice. And this was our on the return home uh, going through the upper part of Alabama when we went through the southern part last time through Mobile with that, remember that crazy Oh tunnel. yeah, I like northern. All right, Breezy, where are we? We are in Jasper, Alabama. What do you think about Jasper, Alabama? I like Jasper, Alabama. It's nice here, isn't it? It is nice. People are very nice here. They are nice. Right? Yes. And we were driving down the main road heading towards uh, Memphis, Tennessee last night and she saw a huge cross on the side of the road, kind of like the ones you saw earlier in our documentary. Yes. And she said, oh, let's just stay here. So we drove about, what, five minutes back into this tiny little sleepy town, <laughs> yes. right? Yes. But then you can see, not much in Jasper. I mean, this is just one little section of it, obviously, but there is everything here. I mean, there's Walgreens and CVS's and all kinds of crap. But guess what, guys? Yes, again, we are looking for the Waffle House. And I think we saw one right down that road. And uh, let's do the hotel. Boom. Okay. Super 8. Not too bad. Not too bad. All right. Cool. So I'm sitting in the Waffle House in Jasper, Alabama. I love the Waffle House. I'm so grateful for the Waffle House. Oh yeah. Okay, this good old Byron. Uh, this guy Byron, I met him on one of my cigarettes. Just hit I-40 West. Oh. So now, look at two of these cool bridges. Nice. Very nice. We got stuck in the rain, which kind of blows. Look at, there's Arkansas. Yep. We're in Arkansas now. All right. Look, look at this. We're entering oh Arkansas. Thank you, baby Jesus. Right there. Oh All right. My. Cool bridges. Thank you. We're we were in state to go then? Yep. After this state, we're nope. in Oklahoma. Arkansas, we're in Oklahoma. Yep. Yes. We're six hours away from our destination back in six, Oklahoma. Oh, no, seven. Oh, well. Who knows? Well, I guess it depends on how fast Miss Breezy's going to drive. <laughs> how much traffic we run into in Little that's, Rock. That's a fact. Right, babes? Yep, that's a fact. All right. So, yep, we're doing it. Okay, we are 30 miles outside of Little Rock, Arkansas and hit a major wreck on the highway. It said it's going to take about an hour and a half. Is yeah. that what they said? <laughs> to get through it. But, hey. I'm with Breezy. We got good music. We got endless cars to look at as we go by and whatever. It's so <laughs> riveting. So riveting. But this is what we're up to, guys. Going a whopping one mile an hour. We'll get there eventually. But we're talking about maybe stopping in Little Rock and eating yeah. something because, you know, we deserve it after this, I think, right? <laughs> yes, there's self title uh, today. <laughs> <laughs> I will have to say that my foot is going quite numb pushing this damn clutch, you know, but hey, it is what it is. So, welcome to our world. And literally what happened, what happened though was, is we immediately saw a gas station. Well, yeah, and, but we went off, we got off the highway. Yeah or off that street and then um there was a super long line to the bathroom and then we turned left there's right. a really long line to the bathroom we turned left to go to the um the toward the route. gas station right and um then your gps showed us a whole alternate route that oh yeah remember and we went through some farm areas oh that was kevin's a Crazy. farm area right and yes. it was like pothole city roads back yes, farm it was areas. so cool huh? and it was nighttime yeah it remember? was cool huh? and that was crazy that was really um, cool but then it was like turn on this unknown road and then yeah. turn on the left on this other unknown yeah. road and then but sure enough yeah it took us past that entire wreck yeah we didn't stop and eat still no <laughs> And so, and it was very nighttime at that point. It was very nighttime, but we didn't see semis. We got, we got us back on the highway. Right, right. And I don't think we've seen a semi for no. another state at least. And, and that was amazing. 
I mean, only in Arkansas did you see this. Okay, slow down a little bit, Kevin. There we go. This. Okay, slow down, Kevin. A little bit. This is pulling this. This. Okay, that is pulling. Look at that. That's the most. I don't know what I've ever seen. Yeah, oh my, oh, oh, my. oh, 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 oh a truck come. with a so truck. Uh -huh. I take one of them. Oh my, here's the next set of cars. Only in Arkansas have I seen this. Okay, one, two, three vehicles. A man is pulling three vehicles. That's insanity. Then remember? Wait, found... no, I don't remember what happened in Little Rock. Okay, then we took three wrong turns. You got very upset, then turned off onto some industrial area, and we found that little park. <laughs> remember? <laughs> that was just a green belt, and that's all it was. Oh, oh, was that the Budweiser yes. one? Yes. The Budweiser, and I, and I see that the Clark's, what are those horses called? Clydesdales. Clydesdales. All right. In a crazy turn of events, we did what we said we we're gonna do. Drove all the way back to Yukon, Oklahoma. Uh, we're about ready to haul this trailer to Stillwater, where Breezy and I will be for the next two or three days by a nice lake, the lake from earlier. So, um, you know, try to sell the guitar so we can get some money for the ride back to that's right Prescott so we gonna she missed her flight because she was supposed to go let me flip this around there we go Oh, okay, so she was supposed to fly out of Fort Lauderdale on the, last night, 8.30. We were here. No, we were in Arkansas still, I think, at that point. So we decided, oh, well, maybe we just buy her a cheap flight out of Oklahoma City. Um, well, our dumbasses forgot the fact that it's pretty much Thanksgiving time. So the cheapest flight's 400 and something dollars screw that and I'm not about ready to put her on a damn Greyhound bus in this sketchy place and that 21 hour drive uh, -uh ain't gonna happen I'm not gonna do that to her so this guy is going back to Prescott with her um, but we are in perfect time to do some Christmas Christmas installations um, I do have new years and years of experience doing Christmas installations and there's a way we can make several thousand quick so then I can figure out what's the next step so things have taken a positive spin um, so that's good so we're gonna try to enjoy the lake for a couple days maybe try to see my daughter uh, again my family a little bit just before we depart back to Prescott so um, stay tuned from the lake oh breezy Hi. where are we at we are, I think we're in Yukon. Oklahoma. We're leaving Yukon. Oh, we're leaving Yukon, Oklahoma. And okay. we're going to Stillwater, to Oklahoma. Stillwater, right. Okay, that in front of us is going to be our temporary house for the next two or three days at the lake. <laughs> we're following our house. That's kind of <laughs> weird. Okay, but hey, it's going to be fun. Yes, it is. We're talking about getting a fire going tonight, maybe doing some s'mores, maybe a little guitar around the fire. Yes. I don't know. Maybe tomorrow I'll go catch a, catch a movie, maybe. Yeah. That'd be fun, That'd be huh? Great. All right. So, uh, more in a bit. Yeah. Oh, there, there's two of them. They're trying to ram heads, it looks like. <laughs> wow. Okay, so what happened was Breezy finally showed up at nighttime um, after getting lost, getting back to Stillwater. She wound up in where? Um, Orlando, Orlando, Oklahoma. Oklahoma. <laughs> Wherever the hell that is. Okay, <laughs> I looked at Jim. Jim looked at me. He goes, how the hell did she wind up there? And I said, well, Breezy. <laughs> And he goes, okay. So he talked to her, uh, showed her how to get back. 
and she finally got back about two hours after she went to go get the dog. Um, it was nighttime at that point. And as soon as she brought the dog back, it had a loose fitting collar and the dog saw me and did a shimmy maneuver backwards and slipped right out of the collar. That screen door is kind of flapping, is it? The door kind of is from the wind. Dang it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe if you just shut the door for a minute And then she'll start making that noise We did that already <laughs> But you weren't patient enough, Kevin Oh, well, I'm gonna <laughs> Trust me, I will catch this dog What's this show called that you like so much? The Brave The Brave Season finale <laughs> Well, Jordan should be here in a little bit yeah. She'll catch the dog Mm-hmm Yep. She did last night. No, yeah, I really liked her. Okay, we were recording. Jordan, say wave. Hey, wave, Jordan. Yeah, this is my daughter. Okay. Uh, Breezy got a dog today, and it got loose, but now we're coaxing it into the trailer with popcorn. Why am I inside when I should be outside? I don't know. you got to be outside. We're waiting for the dog to come in, and then we're going to sh shut the door behind it and drive it in here. And get its collar back on it. <laughs> I don't care. If it's gone tomorrow, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> Modelo. Oh, Modelo. You've been liking that since you've been here, haven't no, you? No, that's just what I've been drinking. Okay. Are you going to switch things up, Kev? Um, yeah. You know, as far as Modelo's go, I usually drink the dark one. Yeah. Yeah. But but Roxanne, but Roxanne appreciates the blondes. So basically, um. what we don't drink, Rock will. So. Sketchy. Sketchy. Yeah, well, she's not anywhere near. Oh, I mean, she, she will. She's not, be. In, she's not anywhere in sight. Anyway. Hey, she will be. It's pitch black outside. You want me to turn off the light on the outside? Oh my might, God. might be Thank helpful. You. I don't think how we did it last night. What are you doing right now, Kevin? I'm catching a dog, fishing style. <laughs> fishing style. We have a rope hooked to the door with food, trying to lure the dog in. It worked last night. But last night we used popcorn. Oh, you want me to pop? Let me pop a bag of popcorn. Oh, that's a great yeah, idea. Let's pop strong. some popcorn for the dog. Basically, the dog spanking brand new to us escapes <laughs> and it is running around all night long and the dog doesn't know us the dog is scared of us but the dog knows that it sort of belongs to the trailer because i guess it was smart enough when we dropped it off in the front of the trailer or something i don't know but it was weird anyway so basically we're out literally killing um flashlights trying to find this dog. We, we killed a couple flashlights, burned the batteries down looking for this dog. The dog would come close. It would come about 10 feet from us, but then we'd go to try to capture it and it would continue running, right? And yes, then- Kevin, you have a lot to say about the dog. <laughs> and so, because I'm the one that had to catch it. Okay, so basically at some point we said, I give That'll up. That'll be the next documentary, Kev. <laughs> What happened to your dog? Yes, there you bum, go. Bum, bum. Yes, Steve. Continue. Steve happened to the dog at this point. Okay, so, um, <laughs> so literally, Breezy is crying at this point. She has another breakdown at this point. She goes, "I'm sorry. I'm. What'd you say? I'm sorry. I'm such a a burden to everybody." And I just want to go home. And she went on this tangent for about a solid hour. And then she would go off walking deep into the forest by herself. And then where'd Breezy go? I don't know. She's off talking to herself out in the forest. And, and so Jim was like, well, whatever. If the dog comes around, the dog will come around. And that's kind of what we did. You yeah. came in at one point and you're just kind of pouty pants um, <laughs> sitting there. And the dog was just outside. and But you, it wouldn't come in for nothing. Yeah, but the, then Jim opened up the door. Oh, and yeah. The and then in the middle of the, And then, yeah, but the dog was staying by the trailer. <laughs> I know. It, it was go. so odd. It would run around. And it would run, run around. around. Oh, then I seen the deer. That's how I found out the deer talk. Oh, because yeah. Because I was out having a pouty wowdy fit. So and what, I ran into a deer. So what sound does a deer make? Ah! <laughs> 
She never knew that deers make a weird sound like that. Never knew that. I came to within 50 feet of a deer and it... So here we are driving back into Prescott, going down one of the main drags, Gurley Street, uh, where I used to work at the tattoo shop on Gurley Street. That's where you and I met, was on Gurley Street. It was on Gurley Street. All right, so we're heading down Gurley Street, heading to the famous downtown area. That mountain you see straight ahead is the most famous mountain in the area called Thumb Butte. Yep. And um, back in the 90s, I used to climb up that thing daily. Um, if I climbed up it now, I think I'd have a heart attack. You probably would, Kev. Yeah. <laughs> yep, I'd and, be dragging and, you down. And I'm not sure that your ankle would make it. It would, Kevin. Have faith in the ankle. <laughs> <laughs> if not, I'd have to throw you over my shoulder like a cave woman. Well, see, there you go. That's why. It would yeah, work, right? It would work. It, right. You could do that. All right. All right, so tell us your name. My name is Randy. And how do you know Breezy? She's my sister from a different mister. <laughs> there you go. You guys have known each other for a really long time. We've been on each other for over 10 years. And um, she probably knows me better than anybody on planet Earth. Wow, that's really saying something there. Yeah. For sure. She's a good gal. For sure. And so I got to know you just a little bit right before we departed for uh, our epic drive to Florida and back. <laughs> for the journey of a lifetime? <laughs> yes. And she had you fold down the fort, right? I did. I quit my job and came up here to uh, watch the pups and the cat and, and uh, thought I might make a different right. attempt at life. and, and yeah, uh, Kind of a change in attitude and latitude. latitude. Yeah, absolutely. There you go. And then uh, you were here for, what, three weeks? Uh, about three weeks. About three weeks, something yeah. like that? Yes, sir. All right. And then upon our return... Uh, we came back with a whole nother dog. I got a and whole nother a family member. Yes, uh, so a new family about, member. Tell us about the dog named Your Dog. Well, Your Dog is not my dog. <laughs> she's Your Dog. And, uh, she's Breezy's dog. Actually. She's Breezy's dog. She cries when she leaves and stands, but she, she does. She does. She does. Anxiety issues. Yes. Oh, so, I got you, girl. we at first thought maybe she'd be my dog. But, she, but she's not my dog. We assumed that, the, that your dog was going to be your My dog, dog but she's right. not my dog, so I'm okay with that. I'm right. like, where we're dogs happiest is where that dog should be. So. <laughs> right. But explain to us how we came up with the name your dog. Nobody wanted her. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody wanted the dog. She was like, it's not my dog, it's your dog. So your dog kind of stuck. 
It did kind of stick. Yeah. Because we were and it's calling hilarious. it about 50 different things. That yeah. Were. We're calling it Randy with an I. Right. We're calling Perfect. it Lady. Now we're calling her Sketchy. Sketchy. Super Sketchy. Yep. Sketchy. Lady. Uh, right. I think, and a few more just doesn't come to mind right now. Yeah, but. exactly. But your dog. And then, so then we thought, okay, well, we're just kind of clowning around with that idea, right? Yes. And then all of a sudden we just stuck with it, maybe. Yeah, we did. One night we were just all sitting here watching movies and playing with the dogs. Right. And we laughed our butts off. Oh, man. For we hours. laughed so, we did. We still do. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We still do. It it's still cracks us up. Joke. It's freaking hilarious. It'll be a constant joke within us three. Yes. Oh, it's a, sure. And it's a name that'll stick forever. Now, tell, tell the camera what you think your dog is. It's a dog. It's a big, hairy dog. Lovable, well, sketchy got, got lady dog. Hair. Yeah, she's kind of a different kind of a kind of a. Well, we yeah. think. Well, first off, we think she's a young adult. Right. She's given birth. She has had puppies. Right. Recently. And but she's so feisty and like puppy, gets in right? everything. She's like a puppy still. Right. Plays with this little girl right here like oh, yeah. a puppy. Yes. Well, it, well, it was very touch and go for the first three days. Yeah, they, they were, were at each other. Yeah, there was a lot of stress. A lot of stress. It was super stressful. It was very they stressful. Were fighting, constantly setting up a pecking order. Maybe, yep. Right. Mm -hmm. And then the cat. And the cat still hasn't gotten into the fold yet, but right, he right, come. Right. He hasn't given up either. <laughs> no, he's he's Tiggy's a cool dude. Yeah. And I miss Tiggy. He's, he's a big a, cat. A big cat, like twenty five pounds. Right. Right. And still has claws. Taught this dog. Taught your dog. Yes. Taught taught your dog a lesson. Taught her dog. Yeah, taught her dog. <laughs> Your dog learns. Right. I haven't learned yet, but right. But we still have a harness. We have we still have a harness on your dog because we're afraid that it, it might get out and it's easier and to grab. Still. Again, I don't have a dog. It's not my dog. It's your dog. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So so basically, what is what is your next plan, Randy? Well, today or. Today, I uh, have decided that I'm going back down the mountain to Phoenix, where I belong. Okay. And it's either going to be later today or tomorrow. I'm not sure. Could be either one. But I have a job lined up. I already did. Um, I was, got a phone call. They offered me the job today. That's great. And that's uh, with the company I've, I've been with. Yes, more money. That I've been with for a number of, of years. I keep quitting and moving away. And coming back to Phoenix. Seems to be a weird pattern. Yeah, it's got to stop. Yeah. I'm just grateful that I have a friend in a position of authority in the company that likes me and wants me back all the time. So. Right, and you know you're always safe to come back here. And this is my yeah, this is right. my home away from home. Right, right. You know, I love my sister Breezy. Kevin, you're a cool dude. Well, you usually come up a couple times a month anyway. I do. I have been, and I haven't. I haven't. Right. I Breezy. It's like after I came back from my last trip, I've been coming up here frequently. Yes, you do. Right. Because it's a uh, family for me. Yeah. Yep. Breezy's my sis. Yeah. That's, That's my great. Girl, for That's sure. great. Like I said, sister from a different mister. And right. And we, and we thank him for holding down the fort. Yeah. During yeah. our whole. Yeah. Trip. That was, it worked out well. I needed a change for a while. Well, and it gave you, you know, time to reflect worry. a little bit. Yeah. Figure out really what you want to do. Yeah. I know I have about as much ambition to be in Prescott as I do in Iowa. So. Right. Here's the car. I hear you. All right. All right. Um, again, thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Signing off. Okay, we are live. Okay, let's start by, what is your name? Brianna Wilson. Okay, and how were you involved in this entire trip? I was driving Kevin Bell to Florida to do his next film. Right, but then what happened? And then we got stuck in Jacksonville, Florida. Yeah, because of wrong timing, huh? Well, I like to call it something different, but I'll go with that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and then we went out there to make a movie. Yes. Okay? No, but, you uh, went out there to well, make a I movie. Well, I went out there to get settled to make a new movie. But yeah. The timing was off, so we drove all the way back. Yes, we so did. So now that that's over, what would you say was most memorable about the trip, or what did you seem to learn from that 16-day adventure? I don't know, Kev. I don't know what exactly I learned yet. That's going to take some time to figure out. Yeah, we're still processing. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, I can't say I learned 
this. I learned I can do anything I want to do. Yeah. Well, you I learned that. that. You can drive all the way across the yeah. United States. Yeah. Yeah. For and sure, I did. Yeah, and be safe. For sure, I nothing did. Nothing happened to us. No, nothing happened to us. Thank God, nothing happened to us. That's right. amazing. Right, that was amazing. Yes, right. yes, but yeah, I think if anything I could say I learned right now would be that anything's possible. For sure, right. I believe that. Right. Because I've never been in a situation so far away from my comfort zone. That's true. Would you say that a trip like this epic adventure that we went on, five thousand five hundred miles? Do you think that any couple should go through that to either strengthen their relationship or to challenge themselves? Absolutely. And do it broke. Right. I would suggest doing it broke. That was quite an amazing experience. It was quite an amazing experience, is right. Your dog thinks so too. Oh, yeah. See? All right. So uh, you just saw your dog come up there for a second. You might have seen part of its head. <laughs> okay. Your dog is definitely your dog. I know. I don't. I know. And how would you say, I want you to say about your dog now, because Randy wasn't very forthcoming about your dog. I guess your dog has a special place in my heart because, hey, your dog, quit. Get in here. See, she's listening to me. So anyway, she has a special place in this my is heart your dog. because the day, be, well, not the day before, but in Florida, I witnessed devastation. And I'm sure that we'll go over that when we're... Yeah, we're going to talk about that. Yeah, we'll talk about that more in the film. Um, and it broke my heart, and I literally cried my way out of Florida. And I was determined to get another dog. So that's how your dog came about. And then, yeah, and how she got the name your dog is pretty funny. So. Right, but what do we suspect your dog actually Oh, is? your dog, we think, is part koi dog. What is and a koi dog? A koi dog is a coyote and a dog mixed together. So what two dogs do you think it is? I think she's an Australian Shepherd Koi dog. Okay. That's my guess. So hopefully we're going to make money off this documentary and take our take your dog to the vet. Yes. Yes. And then determine exactly what it exactly. is. Exactly. Once and for all. But it does act like a wild dog sometimes. Yes, she does. Not yes. A brat. Uh, she's a big brat. And I've raised a lot of dogs in my time. Right. So... Um, given Hi. this long trip, would you say that you would ever uh, do this again? Yeah, if it was with you. Well, that, <laughs> oh, that's very nice. But I mean in general. Well, you did discuss with me as we were driving the southern route all the way to Florida that you were entertaining the idea at some point of taking a northern Yeah, I would like to do the northern states. North, up to New York, maybe up Yeah, to I would like to do the northern states because I only have 15 states left to see the United States, which are mostly the northern states. So it would be nice to go to, to Utah, where I grew up, and then to Colorado, and then go up through Oregon, which I love. So yeah, I would like to do that with some, some pocket cash, though. Oh, yeah. More yeah. money this time. Yeah, with more money. I have to, to um, ask people to help us out. Yeah, not have to be in survival mode, right. I guess is what it is. Right, right, yeah. Right. And one thing we will discuss is that we stayed in super cheap motels. Yeah, we, yeah we, we had to. We didn't have a choice. So, yes. Yeah. Yes, and we've learned a lot about them cheap motels. I, uh, blow dryers and cheap motels are awesome. I really appreciated that. And super eights rock. They actually, they, I'm telling you guys, if you're a broke bitch, do Super 8s. You and won't be disappointed. Waffle House. And Waffle House. Two people can eat for 10 bucks yes. in 2017. Yes. Yes. I'm so telling you. Yes. We're promoting the crap out of Waffle House. We are. House. They rock, man. They, they yeah. definitely have a place in my heart now. That's true. That's yes. True. Okay. Do you have any final words that you might want to tell the people about if they're ever thinking about going on a trip like this? I would say. Go with somebody who has your heart, that that has your heart, because then you know you have each other's back. And you can really rely that on. You can rely on. It depends on you dependable, and they're not going to leave you nowhere. And somewhere, right? I know what it feels like to be abandoned, so I know I wouldn't do that to somebody. So, yeah, I would go with somebody that has your back, for sure. You rock, Kev. All right. Signing off? Signing off. All right, all right, all right. I am John Kevin Bell. I am an indie filmmaker. Um, basically, I've been living in Prescott for the last two and a half years. Um, as of about a year ago, I started filming my own commercials and short films. I just completed with Brianna um, my first feature film called The Victorian Hauntings. 
you can see it on YouTube and check it out on IMDb if you're interested under my full name, John Kevin Bell. Um, thank you for checking that out. Okay, so what we were planning or what I was planning was to film my next film in Florida. I already had a spot um, supposedly lined up to where I could just go to and transition to and then was going to film a vampire movie over the next uh, year or so. But we get all the way out there. Um, Brianna was willing to drive me out there, be with me as we went out there. And um, we get all the way out there and the timing was just off. I was supposed to be meeting up with a couple different people and they just weren't there. Um, so, and we ran out of money. <laughs> so that, that really put a wrench in everything. So basically what we decided to do is just drive our asses all the way back. <laughs> and, um, now back in town, now we've decided to, um, film this entire trip of 5,500 miles. And, um, so people can see part of the United States and things that you might go through. These dogs everywhere around here. <laughs> okay, so um, would I do it again? Well, of course, I would drive anywhere at some point to make a movie. Of course, I would do it again. But um, it, it went from a, a failed trip to a moving location to shoot a film to an epic journey between two people. And I've learned a lot through this whole process. I've learned that you can really trust some people. I've seen some really crappy people. Um, I've seen some people treat other people horribly on this trip. And we've seen people with hearts of gold on this trip. And I think you're going to be able to see it through the film or have already seen it through the film. Um, hopefully you really enjoy the film. And uh, we look forward to showing you some more YouTube videos very soon. What do you want me to say about this dog? Um, basically, the story with this brown dog, it was a male, right? It was a male. It was a male, I, I believe. believe. It, was a male. it was probably about a mid size, uh, maybe about 40 pounds, maybe 50. Probably more 50, 60. Some, pounds. Somewhere in there. It's a good, big, a good it was sized dog, good, but skinny. Yeah, he was skinny. You can see his ribs sticking out. Yeah, it was You very can tell sad. it's been out, but it had a green collar on, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it had a collar on. Yeah, uh -huh. it had a green collar on. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. I remember that. And then all of a sudden, we heard this commotion like screaming from yelling from outside and we're like yeah, what the at, hell's that at the next door yeah at um, the red roof Inn. at the red roof Inn, which was uh, adjacent to us yes or we were staying. there was just all there was was a chain link fence between our place yeah. and that place we yeah. were at the night's inn yes the night's inn <laughs> right which was literally the cheapest motel in all of jacksonville oh yeah but yeah yeah and we really looked yeah, we uh, yeah we did after I had some tantrum tantrums along the way. Right, but we got there. We got there. Okay, um, but back here. but back to this story. Um, we're hearing um, some commotion, and we're what's that? So we go out into our landing. We're up on the second level, and we look over, and we see this brown dog um, being shooed out of the f uh, the front entrance of the red 
uh, Red Roof Inn. Yeah. And there was looked like three, maybe four people. You know, actually, come to think of it, as we were walking up to go into mm -hmm. our room, mm -hmm. we seen that going on. Oh, is that Remember? it? Remember? And then you said, just walk. Yeah. Just keep walking oh. because you could tell I was getting. Yeah. Okay. And, See, I forgot that. Part. Yeah. So okay. I was walking, and you said, "Just keep walking," because right. it was very traumatic. It was very. It was, you know. And I just didn't want any drama. I didn't want any weird issues. Well, right. You know. Yeah. Um, especially in a very um, sketchy area of Jacksonville, mm -hmm. an area I've never been, an area you didn't know. Or can and, I go back to? You? Well, and then remember, <laughs> remember. After this dog incident, you took my car to go get an errand somewhere. Oh, I went to go your to get your car after I had an episode. Okay, when we first got there, we got to this motel. Right. And the lady was, I don't even know how to say this at this point. She was point, just Kevin. rude. She was rude, and I called her a name that yes. I've never used before. Right. And that's that. Yeah. So... And, um, and there was a so motorcycle then, guy going in, and then you told him that to don't go there. Don't something. go there because yeah. it's a <laughs> right. new word. Spooky. Right, right. I don't know. But then you took my car to go oh, run yeah, an I, errand I, I, somewhere. I took your car to go get laundry detergent at this point. Right. I took your car to go get laundry detergent but, because we haven't to do laundry now for four or right. five days. Four or five days. We, we had to do laundry. We ran out of clothes, Everything. and we literally, in Jasper on our way back, bought socks and socks underwear. Socks and underwear. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> so we had to that's buy how, That's how crazy stuff. it was. Yes. But moral of the story was, guys, she left her phone in the room with her GPS and everything on it. Oh, yeah. And, then, and then you got lost. I got lost. I <laughs> how did. many different places did you go? Three. And then you were like, how and do I get back? it was the last street, and I seen it, and I was really hoping I was going the right way, and oh, I was. And oh, then, man. bum, 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 <laughs> I was like, I'm going to do laundry. This is cool. I found right. my way back. Right. As I'm walking by with my laundry detergent, the kind, young gentleman said, it's closed. And I said, what time does it close? And he said, 10. Okay. And I looked at my stuff, and it was 9.30. Right. So I knew something was weird right. at that point, too. Right. And so then, basically, so we're... So then, I went back right. down, and then this is when this dog right. came. So then, what was happening, we heard three or four people shooing the dog away. And kind of swatting at it and kind of kicking at it. Go away, yeah, go away, shoo, shoo. And it was just kind of disheartening because it was late at night to begin with, and there's not a damn thing we could do about it. And it was crazy. Oh, I so, tried to do something yeah. about it. I tried to call animal control, had walked down to the yeah. office. Yeah. 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 We did. We walked down to the office. Yep. Yeah. And so. <laughs> she was like, "Oh, I can't believe they're how they're treating that dog, and you know, and everything." And 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 when I was I was I was basically at this point, babe, just come inside. Let's not get involved. Just let it be. Just let it go. Yeah. I know it's a shit situation, but I mean, you know. Yeah. And <laughs> and so then you went outside for something to smoke, maybe. I probably did. I went outside to have a cigarette or something yep. like that. Yep. And then yep. the dog came over into our area, over into our hotel well, around came, the fence yeah he came around the, yeah he came around the, yeah. went downstairs i think to get the laundry something like that something like that and um yeah he was over in our area and then he followed me up to our room and you were in the shower at that point oh, and i remember walking in and i said kevin we have a problem right. and i was giggling at that point because i couldn't believe that uh, 2700 miles away from home right. i find a dog right so i'm giggling and then take it from there okay Kev. All right, so then um, the dog was literally outside our door. Well, yeah. and then it came into our space for a little bit. And then we were like, well, maybe we can just hide it out in here for the night. And then in the morning we can call animal control or take well, it no, to the... Well, we didn't think that. You thought that. Well, I was thinking maybe, maybe we could somehow keep it in the room but the, yeah. but then the thing was oh, there was yeah. a no dog policy in and that. not only that we were right above the office and we we're Kevin. right above the office and right above it and the managers knew about the dog do you remember dog. using the microwave in that office kevin oh yeah oh, oh yeah, yeah. I that was pretty 
Yeah. I thought I was dreaming at that yeah, point, yeah. but that was very intense. That was. It was very scary. It, it, it was. I mean, I can't believe that we made uh, it through some of the situations that we were put in by this point. Oh, for sure. Even. And at that point, I was even like, get me the hell out of this place. Yeah, it was crazy. Let's just get back to Oklahoma. And this poor dog sat outside of our door for two yeah. hours, nudging the yeah. door, going... Now, what happened was... I even called Randy during that time. Okay, so what happened at this point was um, the security guard guy... Yeah. Or whatever. I went downstairs said, to tell the office guy that this right, dog is right. out. So then this then the dog came back upstairs. So then you um, were told by the security guard guy, can, ma'am, or whatever he called you, can you please bring the dog downstairs? Oh, or, yes. Something this like that. I went outside to so, have a cigarette. So then you took it downstairs, and you barely even made eye contact with the guy. And then the dog went down, and you turned around to go back upstairs, and the dog followed you right back, up, back upstairs. Okay. Then about 45 minutes later, I went outside and heard the guy talking on his phone to somebody. You need to come get it. Or, da, da, something was going down. Da, 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 da. And he said, okay, I made a call. So you and I at this point were thinking, okay, well, maybe someone's actually going to come now. And then we kind of just tried to go into the room and chill Yeah. for the yeah. night. Yeah. Um, you even poked your head out a few times in the night to see if it was out in front yeah. of the door or not, and you didn't see it. No, because I tried to call Randy. Right, right. To so, show him the dog. So then, uh, the worst thing ever happened, though, in the next morning, um, Breezy wakes up, and the dog was dead in the road right in front of our spot, maybe a, about 50 yards to the left of our, our um, broom, and it was on the side of the road. And she was crying, and I can't believe this happened, and this and this and this. But she even said that night, almost like she predicted it, that that would happen. She, that night, Breezy said, I have a feeling or something that that dog's going to get hit by a car. And sure enough, it did. Absolutely. Because you know? look at how they were treating that yeah, poor I animal. Know. But it was horrid. In hindsight, at this point, I'm, I'm kind of glad the dog oh, it, I, died. Oh, after what I've seen, yes. it was the best thing for that yes. dog. Yes, yes. Wow, that was just but that, crazy. But that's our long dog story from Jacksonville. But you know what, when I first seen it, was I seen him on the road, and I was mm -hmm. I was 99% sure it was that dog. Mm -hmm. And then we went into that goofy gas station mm -hmm. where the night prior I got laundry mm -hmm. detergent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When we pulled out of that, right in front of us was that dog. You were able to see it. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how you could have missed it. It was yeah. right there in front of us, and that's when I lost it. Right. And I was just, well, I was speechless by that point, obviously. Right. Right. All right. Go ahead and. All right. Go ahead and.